Welcome back to True Geordie Extra. We have come off the back of Jake Paul losing a split decision to Tommy Fury. And before we get into dissecting what happened, I want to take you back a little bit in time. If it goes to a points decision and it's a close fight, give it Jake Paul. He deserves to win. Jake Paul's getting knocked out, mate. Uh, John Fury there before the fight saying if it goes to points he deserves it well he nearly did get it because Jake actually did win on one of the judges scorecard and uh, I predicted Tommy Fury winning I said he was the better boxer and therefore would win a decision and I was right on that so before anyone jumps in and calls me a Tommy Fury hater uh, I just think that this is it's funny to think that Tommy Fury with all this extra experience still went to a decision and even lost on one of the judges scorecards and hit the deck in the eighth round i know it wasn't a knockout punch by any means but we got to give credit to jake paul for coming so far and being able to compete in there with a pro boxer who was a lifelong pro boxer and at this point jake paul is a professional boxer is he a great pro boxer no he's got a long way to go he's still only a few years in but if you're sitting there now and after going to the decision with tommy fury saying jake paul's not a boxer you're just a hater cool be that you know leave your nasty little comments carry on hating it will get you nowhere in life you know good for you now to be fair the better boxer won like absolutely the jab and the footwork of tommy as i said in the prediction video is the bread and butter in boxing and at this level that will be enough in my opinion to to get tommy the decision and it was so if i've not pissed any of the haters off enough now i was also right so this will really be annoying some people because not only am i sticking up for jake paul i also picked tommy and was right that's that's so frustrating because you can't even have a go at me because i'm right if i was right about the tommy winning am i wrong about jake being a boxer I'm probably not i just i'm just right about a lot of things these days <sighs> okay okay i'm fucking around with you guys I, it, just don't just just calm down it's just fun sometimes isn't it to be an asshole the reality is a lot of people love tommy and hate jake or love jake and hate tommy but you have to remove your feelings from this and reality and look at this in context you've got one guy who's done this 15 years one guy who's done it three or four years is, and the guy with 15 years should be obliterating the guy who's done it a few years that's just common sense i don't care if you like or hate either guy that's just what should have been happening and that's why big john said what he said and now he can change the story to try and pat people on the back and what i don't mind that i get why people want to do that that's cool but if you're gonna try and downgrade what jake was able to achieve there it's just because you don't like him and fair enough but jake getting to a decision and a split decision at that with tommy fury i think is impressive and it proves he's a boxer i think tommy used this job really well and feigns well and kept jake guessing for a period of time there and also his his feet kept the fight where he needed it to be to play his game and it wasn't where jake needed it to be and that partly is also down to jake's execution or game plan my worry before this fight was that jake would look for that one big shot and he's managed to do that in previous fights against mma fighters who have a lower output and therefore against the tyron woodley you can do that but against a more skilled boxer as i said in the prediction you have to outwork him you have to throw more punches your your output has to be greater than his to make up the skill gap tommy threw more punches and tommy threw the punches at the range where he is at his best i personally wanted to see jake up close and personal get into him from the get-go and start wearing tommy down so that the the more skilled guy also drains his cardio so his feet aren't working as well and therefore you're more likely to catch him which proved that because in the eighth round was when he got dropped you have to make that happen earlier in the fight and you can't do that by letting tommy play it pop the jab and 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 back off from you and keep you at distance and in the previous fights the times that tommy got caught was when he was backed up against the ropes by the jordan in the jordan grand fight and wailed on and and you have to throw multiple punches against the guy in that scenario because he's got skills to get out of the way of them so you you can't just come with one shot he's going to be able to see that coming especially when you're telegraphing it like jake was at times i just don't understand the game plan looking back at it it was as if they thought they could just pot shot against a combination puncher like tommy 
and look for that big haymaker, it's so much less likely with a guy who actually uses head movement, unlike a lot of these MMA guys. Another thing was at the weigh-in, you could see Jake Paul's body did not look great it wasn't as chiseled as what i've seen it it looked flat his performance when he came out looked flat and this isn't the first time that that's happened it happened in one of the woodley fights as well he was complaining after the fight just didn't feel myself and they didn't feel like i had a load of energy he said the same thing in this fight and i don't think that that's him making excuses i think that's a genuine problem he's having and it may be that he's overtrained either way if your fighter isn't feeling physically at his best in multiple fights in the in recent years there's a problem there with the training so we've got a game plan problem which in my opinion it either wasn't executed properly by jake and that's jake's fault or the game plan just wasn't good enough and that's the coach's fault and then a physically uh, underprepared fighter now i feel like questions need to be asked by jake about his coaching staff of why am i in there a, not executing the right game plan and not feeling physically at my best. Because credit to Tommy and the Furies, they were able to do that. Tommy looked amazing. He was physically ready to go eight rounds and he executed this game plan and he adapted his game plan throughout the fight. Although at times, you know, he did get caught. Do I think Jake can win a rematch? Uh, possibly. There's a lot that needs to go into him. But at his early stage, he's not 15 years in the game like Tommy is. So because he's still younger in boxing years than Tommy, his improvements may be bigger increments than what Tommy's able to do by the next fight. And we don't know that. Overall, banter aside, I think that both guys can be proud of what they put on. It was a very fun event overall. The build-up was great. The fight delivered. I enjoyed the fight. Was it the best level of boxing I've ever seen? No. Who gives a shit? It was good fun. And that's all I wanted from this. In terms of what's next for Jake, I think it would make sense to him to go and fight someone else in between the Tommy rematch, give himself more time to technically grow. I think he should just fight KSI now, to be honest. I know KSI is lined up with this Joe Fournier fella. The guy's a businessman. No one's really heard of him before. No one really cares. Like, I think that fight is there. KSI is on social media saying I could beat them both. Make the fight now. Do you know what I mean? Like, before either guy takes another loss, keep the hype as high as possible and, and, and get it on in the summer. It would be fucking fantastic both guys are ready they're fight ready they've been fighting i think just make it as soon as humanly possible as for tommy i mean pfft, i don't really know do you know what i mean they, his fa his family said beforehand if you don't finish jake you can forget about a world title i mean there's your answer. That's their words, not mine. I'm, I don't know what level he can fight at, especially when the only people he can make mega bucks with is influencers. But the reality is he's had a lifetime of fighting and really should be out of reach of these influencers. The fact that he isn't, don't know what that says. Does he go back and, and make a few hundred grand against, you know, these normal boxers? I don't know if he's got the desire for that. But if they do rematch, I would recommend to Jake, take a 10 rounder. You want to try and gas Tommy Fury out and make the difference up with the output and drain him into the later rounds and hurt him there. That's the best chance Jake's got, in my opinion. But yeah, we'll find out what happens next. Don't forget to hit that like button. Stay subscribed to True Geordie Extra for all your combat sports videos, and I'll see you later.